poker, poker, poker. Everyone plays poker. Nothing else but poker these days. No matter where you come from or even where you go to, poker is the game they want to play. No matter how you say it or even how you play it, poker is the game they want to play. Welcome to the Lockdown Life Podcast. My name is Jamie Flynn. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at jam underscore fly. All podcasts are available on our YouTube channel. And while you are there, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the Lockdown Life Podcast. My guest today has over $5 million in live tournament earnings and is number two on the Netherlands all-time money list. He's the man with the upside down sunglasses, the flying Dutchman. Welcome to the podcast, Marcel Lusk. Thank you, Jamie. I'm <laughs> happy to be here. Good. Um, how's, how's lockdown treating you, Marcel? Actually, uh, in the beginning, it's strange because you have uh, so many things that uh, you're busy with. I, I'm busy with a big project in England. You know, I work with Rob and uh, Simon Dustledon and Party Poker. And uh, of course, Rob is having uh, a thousand different projects going on for party poker to get updates, get the best for the players, do whatever you think or try out whatever you think could make a difference for the players. Yeah. But uh, between that, we we working in all directions. And although I'm not really an online player, as mm-hmm. most of them are ongoing, yeah. uh, uh, people like John Duffy, Mike Sexton, Patrick, uh, their faces around that uh, do create and help to make an impact uh, and look at especially at the life side that players are well looked after uh, having a voice but uh, it's not that I mix in the online side I rather mix in the life side uh, for myself so I work on on that part uh, you know I, I worked a long time on the rules uh, I have most of the time, the same principles. As to the lockdown, that takes you out of your uh, main thing, what you're busy with, and then you have to see it like it's uh, playing a football game, and you take a break from 15 minutes, and now it happened to be like four months yeah, 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 yeah. to play the second half. You know, <laughs> this is a strange feeling. But I'm doing well. I mean, uh, I have more time for uh, family, hmm. especially for my children. Uh, which are 27, my son. He has his own band and his own songs. And they are really, really, I think, have great kind of music that is not the normal, but standing out. And of course, I'm biased because I want it to be good. But then again, he gets uh, confirmations from uh, not, not only from Netherlands, but it's more from outside, from Australia, America, and other countries. So that's good. And then I have my daughter, she's uh, having a friend and then she, but it's just like they're doing stuff and I have a little bit more time to look at it. I was, I think I was uh, making the right decision to be in Holland at the time they locked out everything. Yeah. Because if, if the casinos are closed and even Dustle Dawn in uh, Nottingham is closed, mm. then there is hardly anything you can do as a poker player. Yeah. Working on poker, I mean, you, IT work you can do in your computer, uh, uh, c- you can do it from anywhere. Mm. So I have family and friends in Holland and uh, I decided to be in Holland then as long as it takes. And the moment it opens up, then uh, of course I can do and work on. But I'm ready actually with the project from mm. the backside, but now we have to put it in the front. Mm. If the corona stops, then we start. So that's about it. But the lockdown itself, uh, I mean, I did uh, some training today. Uh, sometimes I work out. I just don't go crazy, but it's just like uh, trying to enjoy, especially the sunshine, sunny days, yeah. and having some conversations with uh, your family and friends. I had a card game the other day with my brother, and we played a game we haven't played for the last 32 years. Yeah. And it was so so much fun. 
to have just doing something else than to be on the computer at the night and watching Netflix or looking into Facebook, Twitter and following up with mails. And, uh, you know, so you, you start to do things and give attention to things that you normally didn't do. And you yeah. have more time for it now. Yeah. And then you start to get used to it and you start to actually to like it. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Were you, uh, you, you were born, were you born in Amsterdam? I was born in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. What, what was uh, what was life like for you growing up, and what was your kind of uh, what was your first introduction to gambling? Uh, well, my my <laughs> first introduction was not to gambling, but to card games at home because my okay. father was a card player. So, and the deck of cards uh, has 162 points as they are. If you play Clamias, uh, I don't know how you know the game. It's like the jack and the nine are 20 and 14 points and the aces are 11 the 10 is 10 king is four and then queen is three and the other jacks are two and seven eight nine is nothing except the nine uh, yeah of of the trump card yeah so a deck of yeah. cards 162 points and then you can play against one player or you can play with three players or 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 with total four players you have different variations, like you have poker and oh my and all of this. But the counting of the cards and the tracking of the cards and the reason behind why somebody's doing it has something in it which you can use in the poker game. So I was very good with math and calculation, keeping track, and, and then then together with that came the body language because if we played with my brothers. Then I tried to figure out if they were at it or not. And then I was watching them carefully and acting like I didn't look at them, you know, like things. Yeah. You try to figure out how you can beat them. So I think eventually it went like my father was the best player. And then he started to lose to my older brother in the card game because mm -hmm. we figured out how my father was playing. And then we uh, tried to come up with a system that could beat him in his own game. Yeah. And then my other brother had to beat my brother who knew how to beat my father, of course, you know. So you learn from them. And eventually I was the youngest one. But I, I had uh, the surprise with me because I knew as much as they knew in the game as well. Mm. But I could keep it away for a long time because they didn't expect it. And that's like playing against an online player in a live game. And yeah. they just play their hand for what it's worth. But no... When to put the pressure on whereby they can let you fold 60 or 70 percent of your hands uh, and and that makes them more aggressive which is good in the game but they know when to do it and they know exactly the percentage and if you looking at a player now on the poker table then you might think he's a young guy normally you should think if you're up against a player for 50 then he might have some big experience from 10, 20 years playing, but a young guy from 20, 25, you're always missing out, especially in the beginning, to give him credit for having played maybe a million hands already, yeah. already because they play like 20 tables, 12 tables, mm. you know, like 10, 12 hours a day, and they carry on, especially when they uh, start to make money with it, and then they uh, they know the odds, so you have a misconception in your head because the way you look at it, you don't give them the credit automatically because you're basically not used to that. Yeah. You know, it's not like you, you cannot see the danger in it because there yeah. cannot be that experience in live games because you can only play on one table in a live game. Mm. So this is quite tricky. So, mm. you know, I was growing up getting used to play cards for fun. And then uh, sometimes we played, later on we played for small money. Not me, but I was the youngest one, but they did. Mm. And then sometimes even they, when it was Sunday afternoon, it was nice and they said, okay, let's play a card game. And they played poker, you know, like five cards and you can draw. Yeah. And then when they all checked around after the draw, they did close poker, one close and one open, and then you can bet every round. And I thought that was fantastic because you could tr keep track with the cards. Mm. And there was less luck in, in there from buying three cards and somebody ends up with a full house or something. 
Yeah. So I was intrigued by card games, not knowing that I walked into a, uh, uh, there was no casino in Amsterdam or in Holland. There were only uh, places where they play card or blackjack. And that was in the, in the circuit, in the red light district, they had some clubs where you can game, they had gambling, like yeah. even some roulette places. So at one time I was in a club where they played a card game poker and uh, they played five card stud. One, and I know the game mm. and the cards and the combinations, of course. And I was asking around, I was looking on the rail and I thought like, oh, they play terrible. <laughs> so that makes me go back because I asked how much to sit and I thought like, if I come back with 500 in my pocket and they can sit down with a hundred, they must mm. beat me like five times going in at the last card when I have the best hand and I get paid. So I was calculating. And from that on, I didn't look back because I started to play this game. Then I have, I created my own game because I thought you can do it much better and keep better control and only have this game as your action and just having at home you know like a home game and then you you can invite people you want so you don't have drunk people standing around causing a problem or you yeah. know you can have better control yeah so from there on uh between that i was on my own on the marketplace working for my brother and later on getting my own license getting my own uh, okay. uh how you call that uh license to yeah. have my own business and then I get my license to have my own pub. And from there, and I grow. But between that, I was on the door. I did a lot of sports. I, I tried to figure out to get some more money at night before I started to play card. Yeah. And then I was dormant like two nights a week or something in the weekends. When and everybody goes out, I was standing on the door making money. And I was there as well. I had a drink and I could see the girls as well coming by. You know? yeah. like, so... I think I was, uh, in that sense, a little bit ahead of the curve to combine fun with making some money on the side and having some more. But then when I start to, I was in the army shortly. I didn't like it. I liked it, but I didn't like if I thought it was a waste of time. Because yeah. Holland is so small. <laughs> but if they start a war, I mean, what, what difference would I make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and it's, but, you know, I, I enjoy the combination of being in the same situation with people from your own age, the same age. Mm. And in that time I was doing sport a lot. So I used that time to do a lot of sport and whenever I thought like, mm, I could get away with that, then I was the first and I was talking to others how they should do that to get away with it, you know, to have some more spare time or yeah. like like not going back on a monday it need they need minimum 24 hours mm. to understand that you're not present and need to fill in so if you instead of you going back to monday morning to the army and be on appell you know like they can check everybody's there and yeah. you're missing out but you you send them a message that you're ill you could not come and then to check if you're really ill they need minimum one day so you could always have a long weekend when you go home. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I, I did it like nine out of 10 times. But it's just the way I try to grow up, I think, and find my way between uh, work for yourself and explore what is it you really want. The yeah. real thing I wanted to be always was a singer. But I was yeah. too shy, you know, like, I, of course, it was the Beatle time and, you know, I was... You know, in in that time of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the hippies in 1963, 65, 67, you know, that the yeah. development, you, that was great, you know, <laughs> it looked yeah. like, uh, so in that time, uh, the you're starting to grow up, you're all looking for, what is it you're going to do? I mean, it's, I think still nowadays you have to make choices when you're young, like mm. 13, 14, 15 years, and you should know already which direction you have to go. 
Mm. And then you pick a study, which you have to pick. But most of the, like I know from my daughter and my son, they didn't want to pick what was offered because they put you in some uh, pipeline that goes to one direction. And yeah. from there, I think it's so much better to have those who really know or they think and they want to have that choice voluntarily to make the choice. And the others should have the time to make their choice and just pick what they think they should use for better. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it should otherwise it should be uh, uh, open mm. whenever you think what you want to be then you should be able to get uh, to get support in that direction why yeah. should it be when you're 14 or 13 years old it's much better when you're older so you're more mature so you now know more the direction you're going yeah. so anyway i picked i picked out to be self employed mm. uh, become uh, working on the marketplace yeah and and trying to uh, establish my own business so i had a pub then i need that license like i told you so yeah. in order to get the license i had to go back to school so i i took my school for be able to have my own business as a hotel restaurant or work on the marketplace so mm. i had to go and do like two or three different schools for a longer period of time yeah and then um but it's good to have it you know like yeah i agree and, that. and when you grow up then you become I, the day that i really opened my eyes i think was like it's very hard to work i didn't want to have social never because i don't want to lean on the on the uh, establishment mm -hmm. i want to make my own money but i don't want the establishment to think that the people are idiots. And uh, so I want to do what I think is right, what is correct. So I work my way and on the marketplace, you have to be up like five o'clock in the morning to get your things in summer. And then you get back in the, in the house uh, six days a week, it's like till eight o'clock at night. And, but then in winter, you can only play it you know we only work so much in short hours on the market mm -hmm. so that was hard work i didn't mind until i get in touch with playing a game of poker and see that people throwing away their money you know like yeah. it's it's you give me a dice and you say i can pick four numbers and you can only take two uh, i'm gonna look at the dice if he's if the dice is good then i take the bet of course yeah. So I saw this as an opportunity when I get into the casino and I played on the table of the casino. I stopped doing what I was doing and I never looked back because the casino was like my office. Yeah. You know, I took, I took my own place next to the casino private to be able to be there with friends, play backgammon, analyze hands, uh, later with Noah Booker, who had poker news, Holland in there. And then during the week of the Master Classics, a lot of poker players always came there. You know, Dave, Dave Elliott. Yeah. He, uh, rest in peace. He was a very good friend. When he was in Holland, he always came. And yeah. we had great games, very nice flow, very nice ambiance. Uh, but that was my hobby room, you know, more like mm. my own club for privacy, yeah. for for actually for to sharpen even my game and i played in the casino and it was like the customers are there already i didn't have to do anything because i sit on the table and people play and you give them a fair game and if they want to play the ace eight because they hit the ace and they they don't understand that you are playing your ace game mm. and it's hard for them to win and they, they still going to pay till the end so that's a big big advantage Mm. And um, I always like to even help them to understand that although I was winning their, their money indirectly or directly, and uh, this is on long terms because you play life, I did like to help the weaker ones, the players, to understand the game better. So they can come back, they're still going to lose on yeah. you have more skill, 
mm. but they can play 10 games to lose the money instead of two. Yeah. If yeah. they play better. And I think it's important to build something that uh, you, you skin people, they had a bad experience, they don't come back. But mm. if they had a nice evening and they lost 300 instead of 3,000. Yeah. Yeah. They had a nice evening. Yes, they paid a little bit more as going to a movie, but uh, they they have a chance to come back and learn. Mm. And I think that that helps and support the industry. If we could, and now everything is out there, and uh, the, I mean, you got so many good players now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, people know me from uh, doing crazy stuff, and having a good time, and seeing or uh, get my glasses upside down. And of course, from writing international rules. So being uh, being sometimes the joker on the table and the funny guy, uh, but at the same time, I I I am for justice for all. Mm. Even if you don't like the guy, if he's right, he's right. Yeah. So um, saying that, I was I was saying you should not have these rules in place to uh, the TDA in those days. Uh, and Dave Lamp and Matt Savage, Linda Johnson and Ian, uh, they, they were like the four that did the TDA. So in that time, I was asking them and talking with them to update the rules. And they thought like, who's going to do that? You know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And they yeah, had the yeah. tournament directors organization. Later on, they changed, but in the meantime, I. I thought it was important to write the international rules. I thought somebody's going to do it. I yeah, worked with them. Was there any specific? Uh, was there any specific rules you wanted to um, to implement? Was there no, any I wanted to make it more fair. I wanted to yeah. have a line on the table. I want to have a line on the table, so when you put your cards over the line, it's a fault. Yeah, and yeah. you don't depend on. And and there were more things. I want a family rule, so you don't be sitting on the tournament. And, and still, I don't like it if they do it. You don't sit on a tournament with your brother at the same table if it's not necessary. Mm. Back to your conversation in uh, asking yeah. uh, the ins and outs. And we were left with uh, the moment that I start to realize in the Holland Casino from playing in the other illegal casinos. Mm. When the Holland Casino starts to open up places, because there's so much blackjack places with poker places. So they saw illegal places. There was a lot of black money, obvious, from people yeah. dealing with hush and, and, and cars. And, you know, uh, in the years where uh, flower power has been growing into that. So, I mean, from 1960s onwards, Mm. They developed a situation where uh, eventually you have coffee shops selling still uh, mm. wheat and hash and all kinds of, but who was selling to them? Where did they buy it? Because yeah. you were not allowed to buy it somewhere because there was nobody who could deliver that. So you have to bring in something to the country illegal mm. if you would have a coffee shop selling uh, hash to smoke us. Later on, they just, even in the time when they sold it, yeah. there was a law that says you could not bring it. So okay. the question yeah. was always, where do they get it from? Because they had to have store. Yeah. Because the customer's game, like depending on the coffee shop, who was sitting where and located, and they had like 500 or 2,000 customers a day. Mm -hmm. buying cigarettes like they rolled them for them already and i always wondered uh that's the next question the easiest question is where they get it from so mm. they had a lot of strange things going on even with uh, uh people involved from the government where they want to set up uh, the owners or set up people criminals that bring in this mm -hmm. And then they even want to go to get the big fish and they include people to spy on them. And the, this whole circus was going on in that time. Uh, so, so yeah, so, so it's legal. So um, drugs and all that kind of stuff, it, it's 
it's legal to buy them kind of in the 60s and 70s, but it's, it's an well, issue. Well, actually, not in the yeah. 60s, 70s. They okay. didn't know anything about it. Okay. And when they understood that it was really drugs, <laughs> uh, then they start to understand. Then on the end, to get a grip on it, because everybody starts to smoke it, and yeah. it was everywhere, and you could smell it on the street, then they say, well, why don't we give them uh, coffee shops licenses Mm. Because they didn't know what to do with it, where to go yeah. with it. So they give them licenses. You can sell. They could have an eye on it and keep track. But you could not bring it in the country. You could not buy it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So this was the question in the middle, the big elephant yeah, in the yeah. middle it for many years. Flying it, and yeah. they just didn't want to talk about it, mm. strangely. And then later on, we find out, because I live in Amsterdam, you know the people, only mm. I play card, but playing card in that time and having your own place where you come with your friends yeah. and doing sport, you know, a lot of people who standing on the door in discos. And mm. so you are directly and indirectly connected to this world. Uh, and it was ridiculous. And, but on the other side, there was so much money going around. And if you sit in the casino playing poker, Sometimes people just jump on the table and say, oh, poker. Well, they have no clue yeah. how to play it, but they sit down and they put a grant or two grand on the table. And they play like uh, money was out of fashion. Yeah. They, can, so, uh, yeah. they can't put it in a bank anyway. They can't put that money in a bank. So why not, uh, why not play poker with it? Yeah, you, you're going to think yourself, uh, wait a minute, if you... I just do it in here. I'm not sure if it's loading now. You should be loading for sure here. Yeah. So uh, you think to yourself, it's not my business. I'm nothing to do with it. I play poker. Hmm. The casino is not asking where they get the money from, who walks in. I mean, you understand uh, people sitting on a machine, putting in a hundred and go home. Yeah. They just put in their, their uh, monthly whatever. Uh, but people who lose money, like bags, with bags they come in, uh, it's very clear they didn't work too hard for that or they do something else. But it's not, not my business. It's just like you observe these things and once you're in playing card and get to play with all kinds of people, hmm. I find out if you don't stick your nose in other people's business, if you do your thing and you keep straight yeah. for everybody, no matter who it is, no matter when, then you will have uh, the best way to avoid any problems because people know you're straight. And yeah. then, yeah, sometimes it, it worked, especially my advantage, if people understood that they could give me a call or ask me, what was the situation and how the verdict should be. So I was sometimes getting calls from people that are in a, in a game or something happened, mm. especially when I wrote the international rules. And I, I think you should have international rules for people because nowadays we play everywhere. Yeah. And if you're a local in England or a local in Germany or a local in Turkey or wherever we play, mm then you have an advantage because you play by local rules. Yeah, exactly. And, and the stuff they use in locals is local stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. they put extra stuff in if it's getting busier. But the local stuff will not be root or correct root to somebody who's step over the rules. Like a local that tips a lot. Yeah. It's very hard for a staff person stuff to say to the local, no, no, you cannot do that. No, no, you mucked your hand, it's a dead hand. Because yeah. they take it personal. You know, you have seen it many yeah. times. And I think you should protect the stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And protect the fact that not every player who's local is taking a, an advantage. And not every player that comes from outside should think that they did this ruling because of him or her. Yeah. You understand? So it yeah. works very, yeah, it works I, so much better if we have something that counts no matter who you are, yeah. no matter if you're local or not, and the staff will work by these rules, mm. and then they will have to follow up. 
Yeah. And I, if they say, oh, I, I, then the rules are there. You can look into it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't make a problem. Let's move on. Yeah. So yeah. it, so for me, it was taking a, a, taking this further because I thought this is so much better than to be up in the morning, like 5.30 <laughs> and work till 8 o'clock. Uh, it's yeah. so much better than having your own pub and once every now and then you have to throw somebody out or yeah. find, uh, ask somebody to pay his bill and they're drunk and you know and it's such a hustle and then you have to drink yourself if you're standing behind the bar because if you yeah. say you don't drink because you're doing too much sport or something you're an outsider in your own pub yeah yeah you know and and you want them to say give us four four beers and take yourself a beer as well because the, and you want to accumulate more drinks because yeah. you want to make some money so it's it's very tricky and i figured out that playing card and having an advantage and you can play legally in the casino hmm. tax has been paid and if you're a winner Sometimes I want so much money, in, especially in the months of the Master Classics. Uh, then I go like, it's ridiculous. I, I if I would work what I did before, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I love to work on the marketplace as a salesman. Uh, it was fun. It was nice. You have socializing with direct contact with customers, and mm. it's a, it's a, it's a very, I think, a very nice profession. Because you work for yourself. Uh, yeah. It doesn't make a difference. You make 12, 14 hours a day. It's for yourself. You know, you, you just do it. You don't think about, no, I should only work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. But, but doing the math, you go to a casino, you dress up nicely, you take a cup of coffee, you sit there, and you know, eight out of 10 times, I'm going to make money. One time I can be maybe even because it's not such a great night and you get other mm -hmm. players or some of the players like Rob Holling in that time and and there were some more players that were good and they're having their own way of playing. They they are not going to play another good player because then they might lose. They avoid playing hands mm -hmm. with some good players to play with the weak player, which is normal. Yeah. It's it's like a it's like a tournament. You don't take risk with the better player, you try to avoid it unless you have the moment where you know now it's the time to do it and mm -hmm. put them on the choice to take a risk. Yeah, yeah. So I made my choice to play nearly daily in the casino. Mm. And nobody understood because they even came and say, How did you do that? And where do you pay this from? And they were observing me, thinking. Because of course I had uh, people, I had uh, a girl who was helping me out or assisting me, and uh, I say, uh, yeah, let's have the appointment in the casino. Or let's come to the casino, and mm. then they say, uh, I said, then you can uh, get me a coffee as well. You know exactly how I want my coffee. Things like this. Yeah. But everybody knows I was having a private game for myself yeah. sometimes when I wanted mm. after the casino was closed because in poker there is no there is once you start to play with your friends yeah when do you stand you don't know if it's take four it, hours or 44 yeah, hours that, 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 that was one thing I always wondered uh, it's still the same today the Holland Casino it, it closed at 4 a.m. which uh, I always found Amsterdam being now they did close it now 4 a.m. before yeah, it was yeah. 3 a.m. Before and then they open up why? at 2 yeah. o'clock. Yeah, why did they do that? Well, they had no clue about the poker world. First, they had no clue okay. about casinos. Yeah. So yeah. they brought in some special people from America yeah. and Austria. And I think they were so much better off asking the locals or take somebody who's aware of what they want to do. But they didn't trust the locals because they thought, and they told me in my face one day, they say I could not come in. And I say, well, why? They say, because uh, we think you're professional. I say, professional what? <laughs> How can I beat a roulette game? 
yeah. you cannot beat a roulette game because you have a percentage. I don't want to play roulette unless I see they, they do something wrong and the odds are in my favor. Then I can play. If you pay me 40 times instead of 34 yeah. or 35, yeah. I want to play. I play all the numbers all the night <laughs> yeah. just to make sure. But they, they did make a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Hmm. But I had nothing to do with it. My my only target was for me, if I go to the casino, I can sit having a good game and the people all around are not familiar with the game that much as I was. Hmm. And I was I was a winning player. So was Rob Holling and uh, uh, Rolf. Uh, so there were more winning players because they played more and better and there were uh, yeah. educated in the game yeah and, and later on they find out of course they find out and of course i want to tell the people that it's better to play with an ace king than an ace eight <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and 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 i want the game to keep going and you to come back and to have the game ongoing there i don't need to have a home game yeah this is my home game mm. and the best is it's very nice it's well protected it's next door for me sometimes i had my private games going and I walked from there to the casino to my own house where I lived and have a private game or not, depending on if people mm. come, they say, you want to play a game and then we play. Sometimes we play for three, four days in a row. Yeah. Ongoing. And I mean, in the, in the weeks when the Master Classics were going, then uh, you had people like, doesn't say anything to you, uh, unless, of course, David Elliott, that was his. He was the PC game, and there was, but he brought always all those bigger players and yeah. arranging games, and they know where to find me. And they had fantastic games, of course. But in the meantime, I had fantastic games with the locals. Yeah. Because you have different kind of people. And yeah. in that time, uh, uh, I think the black money circuit mm. was tremendous. So you could not see if people had money. And like I say, I don't, actually, I don't mind people have money. I hope they're all rich. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And I hope they don't harm anybody and they're all doing well. And, and when we had poker games, sometimes it was amazing, the money that went over the counter. And then I find out there was a special Turkish place, there was a Chinese place, there was a, you know, and they had their own games. And then, uh, they, when they came to me, if they play, you learn to know more people. And then mm. I give them a game sometimes. So you get really good connections with people, yeah. which I know them as poker players, or a lot of them. So that was, uh, and then I thought at a certain time, I can do this forever. Mm. But I want to see more from the world. And then Bruno Fitucci actually, uh, came to me one day and he said he's going to have an event in uh, in Baden, uh, in Prague, in Prague. He had right. an event in Prague and the, the buy-in was a thousand guilders in that time. Mm. And uh, he said, if I want to come and play. And I say, I was thinking about it. And he said, well, there's not so many good players, he said, but the best from Europe are coming. And I never, I never even thought about that there are poker games outside. There are poker games, but not there are poker tournaments. Yeah. It, it was I never all, thought about that. It was all cash games you were playing in Amsterdam. Just cash games. Yeah, yeah. And then I started to play a one-table tournament mm. to entertain the people, make them used to it. And then yeah. later on, we could play cash games if they want or not. But it was, it was more fun. And then when he invited me and I went to Prague to play, I won the tournament. And I never forget, uh, they paid me like 40,000 euros. And it was with a hundred and something people. And I thought like, and I say, I saw a few good players. Mm. but really a few all the other ones you could read like an open book and some of the players I just go like boo and then muck their hand or oh, no 
Mm. Like they they acted like what they had made them stronger or weaker. You know, it was yeah. so easy to play them that I thought like, and I asked him again, where they play, you know, where they go. And he said, well, we got tournaments all over uh, there, there, and there. I say, so where are the good players? He say, well, this one and this one and this one. And yes, uh, people like Bubli from France, and there were some more French players who are much better than the rest. But of, overall, it was like, for me, it was like great investment to play and fun. And I didn't want to get locked up in my own place always just because that's what you should do and stick yeah. to. I want to see something from the world as well. And I thought it was a nice challenge to see different places. So I followed up with getting involved with tournaments mm. and then uh, won a few before they actually understand and took me for serious, serious yeah. they thought that it's just luck, you know, like, oh, he's so lucky. First <laughs> time they keep saying for a year, oh, he's so lucky, he's so lucky, he's so lucky. Yes, he's having a good run. He's having, it's like Jorrit, Jorrit from Holt, who's the number one now in Holland with uh, the oh, yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah, yeah. He made, he, I mean, next to him being a fantastic player, I never forget, I played him once. The first time I played with Jorrit, he was sitting on my right side. I mean, I hadn't seen him before, or maybe I've seen him, but never played with him. And I was in a hand and I bluffed him with, because I knew he had a draw. I knew he missed it. We played a uh, Holland. And I made a bet on the end and he called it. And I was, surprised because he had like king high or something yeah yeah and i was surprised that he called it because i was not jewish people understand the game and i say nice hand well played mm. and then i say you know now that you lost your yeah uh, you're, you're scarf, this... you know like you, you just you did you you were under the radar till now yeah 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 now i know, and he I know to laugh. Player. yeah yeah and he started to laugh about it but i meant it. <laughs> yeah i was yeah. serious and from that day on so you understand that i'm not uh i'm good friends with him mm. and he's in the hall of fame as well in holland and he actually was online doing fantastic yeah, yeah. Working hard, working on the arts, and I think he's an incredible player. And mm. now, because I think with him, it's happening the same what happened with me. I tasted how nice it is to play away from in your local. Yeah. He was doing it online, or two, or then he don't have to go anywhere. We can do it. He's still sitting in the house mm -hmm. online. And then I think he started to get the taste of the ambiance of poker. Mm. So you're going back to actually and create a, a round circle because yeah. when you start to play poker with friends, you have fun. Yeah. You have fun. And then it starts to be about the money and you get involved. And, mm. and with the online taking over, you can play 10 tables, 15 tables, always find the game. Now it's everywhere. Then you get so many offers and then they have the live events where you invited to come. So it comes back to the live events mm. and then they start to enjoy the live events. Although they could play like 20 tournaments at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But the live events is something I think that's more special mm. for me. They're more special because you feel alive mm. doing what you're doing rather than being good with, yeah sitting online clicking and having hardly a conversation mm. you know and even when uh now with the real names competition that party poker does uh, it's a bit better i think mm. and more transparent but still i think for me there is nothing better than a live game instead of an online game but yeah. that's typical because I like uh, the socializing between the players. 
Yeah. Although it's funny when you throw somebody a tomato at the table now online. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been enjoying that during the, the lockdown. Yeah, I think it's I, I think we're getting better at making online more more personalized. Uh, Joe, I think they're they're starting to realize that a lot of what people enjoy about live poker is you know the bit of fun, the 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 bit of needling, you know, teasing each other, you know, kind of. Having a yeah. bit of each other, and they're they're implementing that a bit more uh, online now. Seeing that development, it's, it's fantastic. Two over the years, where Mike Sexton actually started party poker, then it gets the the, uh, the downfall in America, yeah. where they they nearly go out of business, and they had a hard time to get back on their feet, and they didn't get there actually unless now that rob stepped in to give them a helping hand to try it out and mm. now it's it's booming and i understand still they want to be the number one normally yeah and poker i mean poker stars is so far out from the beginning because the, the distance was so big that they can they need time longer than actually you should say well they they nearly have the same software now and they give me so much more and if you're talking about live events it's incredible yeah i mean yeah. Okay. i used to say my, the best event to go to is las vegas uh, like the world series yeah but it's las vegas that's the best place to go to to for for a player but if you really look at it I think the Bahamas, the party mm. poker series at the Bahamas, the millions, yeah. was incredible what they did for the players. I mean, they give like 20 and 30 and 50 tickets mm. in a satellite and they had satellite going 10 o'clock in the morning and, and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Some satellites started off with seven or eight people. Mm. And by the time people woke up from playing long cash games on the beach, then they go like, they had like 40 runners. Although the people are there. Yeah, yeah. And they gave away 20 tickets. It's like you get 10 times paid for your money in a, in a one out of two situations. You know, mm. like it's, it's a two to one situation that you're going to win the token ticket if everybody would play the same and they gave away 20 tickets with maximum 40 people and they had more of that going on where they actually said it in a nice way that yes we invest in the people mm. it was another thing that rob did instead of throwing your money overboard with all advertisement and crazy stuff yeah he he throwed it back to the people to the players you're there you support us we don't mind you're in it you're cheap yes we're gonna lose we're gonna have a lot of money uh we give guarantees and we're gonna miss out hundred thousand two hundred thousand five hundred thousand but mm. that means it goes to the players mm. so saying that las vegas is the place to be of course for a poker player everywhere you go you should have been in las vegas during the world series but really the millions especially the bahamas as one of the places from the world is unbelievable, excellent yeah. what they did yeah. and what they put together. And it was uh, extraordinary. So seeing these things, you cannot enjoy Bahamas or Las Vegas or millions events if you sit only behind the computer. Yeah. You understand? So this is fantastic yeah. because they use the packages to give away to get the people come to live events. Mm. And the live events don't bring them any money. It's yeah. not like I, I, I open a chapter that I give away something because I want people to understand that the live events is like Party Poker is giving back to mm. their players, their support. Party Poker, Party Poker support the players and yeah. they want what's best for them. So yeah. in that way, it would be good, yes, if, if the players understand that they, if they have a choice to play mm. online, they should play on party poker. Yeah, yeah. Not because I think their software is the best, because they still have some 
moments where they have weaknesses and, and, and problems because something goes wrong. Like, what can I say? <laughs> With me, it's always a struggle every day. Yeah. But just for the fact of these are the people who support the players, so I think the players should support them. Yeah, I, I, I think it's yeah. logic, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think getting that message out is um, that's the the biggest challenge for for Rob and Party Poker now. I think. Uh, Why are you? Well, what happened? Why are you? Can you? Hear me? And uh, another thing I want to say about uh, and not forget is uh, it's not like I'm. Uh, I want to slime up to po party poker and rob because I work with them. <laughs> uh, uh, because even when I was with Poker Stars, uh, I was trained with Simon Trump and Rob, and I visited them and I support them. And actually, they support me, and, and, and they were the ones who introduced the international rules mm. because they thought they were good, the same like Bellagio did. But um, it's the fact that they have a heart to do what's right. And, mm. and even now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a month, I don't keep track with time. They actually took Kevin Hart in as to be oh. one of the one of the people that support party poker. Oh okay. and the main thing the main thing he support party poker for is he's he's playing poker, he thinks it's nice. Mm. But he well, we know a lot of people who think poker is nice, but I I mean he's a top-notch guy in the industry people know him mm. he understands with his name and who he is he brings out uh, the message to other people yeah which counts a lot more and better than when anybody just from the street would say uh, yeah I like playing poker mm. and he gives the message more like hey i'm rich i'm famous I'm a yeah. comedian. I have so many people, and I could do so many other things yeah. than being part of a group of poker players or poker establishment. But here's the message it should be fun, and I think it's fun. Mm. And this is where we're hitting for, and this is what the message he brings to the table. Mm. Not like play on party because it's good for. Uh, we have more players, we get more players. It's more like he joined more, in my opinion, what I saw in doing the message he bring, how he, how he behaves, how he is, that he goes like, I like it, I do it. Yeah. And he is not doing it for the money. That's something for sure. Mm. <laughs> you understand? And, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's will open your eyes because there is no no reason of money involved with him mm. that makes it even better. You mm. understand? Yeah, he, he's clearly doing so, it because he likes the game. And he definitely bring, bring up the level of entertainment, <laughs> humor, you know, and he's chatty and he's talking with everybody and mm. he's there to speak out for what he feels like, what he thinks. So, yeah, in that way, I think that was a great uh, improvement to have, especially because uh, uh, in the, my idol was, and still is, but he's not here anymore, uh, Devil Fish, of course. Mm. And you miss this kind of entertainment. You miss the flexibility of people where you can have fun in playing the game still mm. trying to win and being social or being trying to win and totally a social like mm. this is why of course I, I don't like the hoodies and totally yeah yeah i like sunglasses mm. but actually i didn't wear sunglasses before and then i figured out that my eyes were hurting for playing in the night time and on the daytime when the sun shines, so I put sunglasses when I was playing at night, and the light for the, to the lights above the table came into my eyes. Mm. So then I tried the sunglasses and I put them the other way around. So they, <laughs> they closed up. And then somebody said, it looks stupid. You have your, brill your, your glasses the other way around. I said, yeah, I know. He said, yeah, but it looks stupid. 
And I say, okay. And because he said it looks stupid, when I was away, then I wear my sunglasses upside down. Mm. Because I, the other people were looking at me and they were giving me a tell. You know, when people are irrational, yeah, especially on the table when men are taking it personal. Yeah, the yeah. Opponent, they get irrational. Yeah, they have it in for you. Mm. They have an Asiac. Normally, they would mark their hand. They're trying to tell themselves or find a reason why they should call that bet mm. because they want to beat you. <laughs> Normally, yeah. they yeah. show away their hand, but they they're looking for a way to beat you. So you only have to wait for them. Yeah, if you know in that mood situation. And I could hear on the voice of people in what kind of state they are, you know. Like, yeah. And you think that you think the glasses um, influence no, the feeling? And I, I, I had people they looked at me and you know they go like yeah, two <laughs> other people. Yeah, you always have that. You always have people yeah. who like you and don't like you. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, do your thing. Mm. Yeah, um, I'll just yeah I'll speak to you a bit, Marcel, about the uh, the, the your uh, World Series runs in the the early two thousands. You were uh, you were saying you you were talking about kind of having a, a positive influence in poker, and you were in a you were in a very good position as as it happened, where uh, you made two deep runs in 03 and 04 when poker is absolutely exploding. It's huge on ESPN. It's huge on TV. Um, yeah. I suppose yeah that. Uh, Aside from the actual kind of poker side of things, just that feeling of the the media, you know, fans coming up to you, you know, walking around the casino in the World Series. Uh, how did all that feel in those uh, those two years? No, it was insane because I was uh, playing with uh, people like James Wood <laughs> yeah. on the table, and he was a fan of me, and I saw every second movie in Holland was James Wood playing in it. Yeah, and then when we were on a break, we had all those lines of people uh, waiting to get to get an autograph or a picture. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I was sitting on the table with James Wood, and we were on a break, and he walked with me, and we were talking. He said, "You know, I was you know, on the table, did that, and uh, uh, it's great to meet you and play with you." And he was like my fan. Yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, well, it's great to see you in real life because I see so many movies. While we were talking about Enhance, and he is uh, he's actually, uh, in that time, he was an okay player. But later on, when in the years after when we played and I meet, mm. uh, he became a very good player, mm. really a good player. But as it is, when we walked over to have the break, and then you go to the toilet, that's the first thing you do. And there was a line with people waiting for an autograph. <laughs> so in my mind, and I never forget that moment that when we were walking up, I was actually wanted to walk through that line because I thought they were waiting for him. <laughs> yeah. And then they asked me the autographs and he was standing next to me and there was nobody actually asking him an autograph because this is a poker audience. Mm. And it, it, it just, I never saw the toilet <laughs> because the, the break only takes 15 minutes or something. And it just was all. And um, he said, I'll see you later. Like, he went. <laughs> That's, that was insane. And, in the beginning, you have people waving from the other side of the room and standing like Bellagio had always a court yeah. uh, on the on the events going on and television and the WPTs and they had like uh, five thousand and later on the ten thousand and the twenty five thousand mm. and then you had people waving and pointing and when I was looking in front of me and then I always looked behind me. You know, like I was watching if somebody is telling somebody, you know, like who, who they're waving at. And sometimes they're from distance, they were calling and asking. So it was different to 
uh, a jest mm. <clears throat> that people saw you as being famous. Yeah, yeah. For, for playing and doing what you want to do and having a good time. And then when I started seeing you one time on ESPN, like even a little bit, <laughs> and then they go like, they put it out there and it's it's like a little insane about what they can do to make you popular or people mm-hmm. like it and then it takes off and you cannot stop it. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, so say in 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 two thousand and three, two thousand and four, um, you you had you had a deep run uh, in twenty seventeen as well. But if, if you look at kind of the players in 03 and 04, um, how how big a gap is there between you know the average skill set in kind of two thousand and four versus the, I think the current in, day? In, I, I think in two thousand three and four, I can say eighty out of a hundred players, I could see they wouldn't have no chance to get yeah. to a final player. <laughs> wow, okay. Now I would say, now I would say, it's uh, the other way around. Yeah. That's yeah. the quality of players that are around who play in the World Series, even mm. when they're qualifiers. Mm. The way they came there is because they understand the game. Most of them. Yeah. And I don't say... I'm a fish, but if I don't concentrate, if I play online Mm. and I do Facebook or Twitter or Netflix or I busy or I have a mail or I do something else or I say hello or I get a coffee because it's, I'm not focused in the game, then I don't stand a chance because they eat me alive. Mm. They don't make a mistake online. They are very good, very good players. Yeah. So, if I'm in a live game, I can use my behavior to mm. invite others on the table to react. Even when I say nothing, I just take my coffee, acting like normal, but having a look at them and observe them. Mm. So now, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into a part of the body language of the players. Even when I'm not in the hand, I can see what they're doing, yeah. how they act. And not always the players who are playing in the hand, but sometimes I'm looking at the players who are not in the hand. Mm. How they react when they're not in the hand, no, no pressure, and they're totally relaxed. Yeah, yeah. And then I see you would have the same way of thinking and feeling relaxed when you have the match, logically. Yeah. But how would you act when there is a showdown later on and I looked at the way you behave during that hand and somebody calls you and you lost that hand because you bluffed or you didn't have what you represented. Mm. You get caught. It doesn't seem to a big a big deal, but I now put my mind back on how you're worrying when you're not in the hand mm. and talking with somebody and watching the game and how you were behaving when you were in that hand and you had the showdown. Mm. And you were not having the nuts. Maybe you won even the hand, but you didn't have the nuts. And how yeah. was your expression and your behavior? And that's what you put in mind. And this is how you could observe and learn why you're not even in the hands. And not only from the people in hands, but sometimes not in hands. And it all adds up. And sometimes yeah. I, I know 100% people have, a, have the hand or not. It's just like, mm. for me, it's 100%. And yeah. I, I'm a, like, I think I'm a three or four times Kings in the World Series yeah. before the flop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Before, and, and, and the last time I mucked people, I mucked open. And then the, uh, I, I, I made the button bat with Kings. And the guy who played like a rock had half of my stack. And he, he calls and things and, you know, and then he said, I'm all in. Like, really? I mean, you're putting like 460,000 in yeah. a pot from 30,000. Mm. So I could only give him one end. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. don't want to be outplayed on the flop. He don't want to dangle with me. He don't want to give me a chance. He wants to make sure he has the best end when he did. So, so I say, wow, that's a big bet, you know? I say, yeah. and even when I, I can pay it, I say, but I, I, 
somehow I said, I don't like my hand anymore that well. So I said, a fault. And I opened my hand, the case, yes. fault. Which for me, any time in that situation, I fault. I know that. Mm. It's for me, it tell, it's clear. I might be wrong, but, but this I, is why I opened my hand. I, I, I think it's, uh, you're only making that move against a certain type of player. You're, you're not folding kings against most people, but in this specific circumstance. No, no, no. It's just the type of player. Yeah. The, 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 you, you play the few hands, and then it's for me, it's like absolute fault. <laughs> absolute fault. And then the rest of the table don't get it mm. because I open my hand. So now, because I open the hand, open fault. Yeah. But it looks like cold. Cold, <laughs> you know, like cold. Yeah. But I fold, open fold, and because it's my head is kings, they say, the dealer say, call, no, I say fold. I had to tell them I fold three times, <laughs> even when his hand was closed. Yeah. And, and they looked at me all like I'm stupid. Mm. And I said to him, you, you know you got aces, I know you got aces, do me a favor, show the table you got aces. I say, or oh, show the bluff so I look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. And then he was like, he said, oh, oh, yeah. and he showed the aces. And they go like, how can you fault? And I thought like, come on, this is, this is, for me it was like normal, but sometimes there are ugly situations where it's just mm -hmm. like, you cannot help it. I mean, uh, yeah. it happens all the time. I mean, things, aces, money goes in and yeah. nobody have done anything wrong. But mm. there are moments that by playing and focus in the game, totally concentration. I mean, I like the, the fact that they show television while you're playing poker. Mm. But it's, if you just watch the game, and I mean the game only, yeah, and the people are watching television they have a big tell as well yeah so all these small things you have to adjust your situation in which you're in so i rather personally i rather have good players on the table good players mm. and no television yeah no distraction yeah and just play the game and play the game mm. my read is so much better yeah 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 uh yeah the uh is, is there any is there any um standout kind of hands so the, the the few runs you had in the the wsop main event uh was it was it largely smooth sailing uh if we take 2003 say was it largely smooth sailing during the tournament well, or was it a lot of up and down or how did the tournament uh, go actually my my deepest run i made when uh, we started with 10,000 points and I was down to 850 points. Wow. In the World wow. Series. Yeah. And I never forget, uh, somebody got knocked out on the table. I played a few hands. I mean, I get unlucky or not. Somebody have like the hand behind me. I open with ace queen. Yeah. And, and they find queens and they call. I mean, they didn't race, and then the queen hits the board, and mm. I lose like three and a half thousand dead hand or something in my pot, which is a lot, but it mm. could be even worse. And then you find a similar hand, you have ace king, and the money goes in, and the hit is the set, you have ace with it. And I was down to 850 points. So there's nothing else you can do mm. than hope for the best. And then I, I backed. 72,000. Wow, at the and end of that, yeah, yeah. One hour before the end, I had 850 points. And I never forget that if that wasn't worse enough that I didn't, I could not find a hand and the hands I played, I lost. And I just want to find a solid hand, pick up the blinds and, and start to grow, get in the groove. Yeah. And the seat that was open against me, I was placed on seat number eight or seven anyway. And the seat number two on the other end was empty. And then a woman steps in or a girl. And then she looks, she says, hi. I said, hi. And I played with her before. 
And the first thing she did was telling everybody, be careful because he's a good player. I know him. And, uh, and I go like, why do you do that? <laughs> why, why, I mean, be careful. I get skinned the way it is. Don't yeah. worry. I mean, what are you? And from that moment when she said to be careful, I thought, well, give me anything now. Yeah. You know, uh, I have nothing to lose, but I have to attack anyway. So they're not going to fall. But now maybe I get the more credit out of it. Mm. And then I run into, uh, I had two times, ace king, ace king, and a double and a triple one time. And I find the real hand. I hit a set and I get paid. And, you know, and then I came back with 72,000 points. Mm. And, uh, I think I get wings, and with the game where I play with uh, Greg Raymer, won the tournament. Mm. Um, the hand before the break, the dealer, I'm on the first, I'm on the big blind. No, I'm on the first position to open up, and he's late position. Greg Raymond, and he's, he was having his uh, puzzle man yeah. uh, glasses. So I'm having like 800,000 in front of me, and he got like 360,000. Mm. And the blinds were still like maybe 2,000, 4,000, or some, something in that way. So yeah, deep stacks, yeah. And I find Ace King. And I make it like 12,000. And it comes to him. And I had Ace King shooter. So now I make it 12,000. Mm. Comes to him. And he say, but when, when we start the hand, it was meant to be a break. But yeah. she dealt the hand anyway. Everybody stepped away from the table. So we got small and big blind. And I'm the first one to speak. And they, they stood up already from the table. They walked away. So now there was no small blind and no big blind. So and I not, opened up. Yeah. And for a moment, I just looked up when he said he's all in. And I looked like, and he was like second in chips in the tournament. Yeah. I was the first. I, way ahead and he was second and then the rest only had maximum 100,000 or something mm. and he was a very good player and he went all in and I thought that he will think that I tried to steal because people are already running away mm. and most of them will pass because I'm the big chip leader yeah. so he thought I thought for a moment, he can easily think that I'm at it and put me off the hand with putting in all his stack. Yeah. And I never forgive myself that mistake because I went to take him on in not giving it 10 seconds more because if it's now I, and we play, I would 100 times open fold and say, good luck. You mm. can have my 12,000 because even when he has any two cards, if if I have to call for a showdown with Ace King, he can win with any hand because he still has to go five cards. I mean, I will not easily throw away Ace King like this, but this was very obvious that in the best situation, I might have 70 30, but I'm risking mm. half of my stack, my leadership as a chip leader, to prove a point to take him on. There's mm. time enough. You understand that? So, and then he shows aces. Wow. So, yes. And then he met me in the same competition. I still so, managed yeah. to how, how, come how, through. Yeah, how, how early is that in the tournament? When that hand happens? Oh, that was very early in the tournament. He was yeah. on my table. Okay. And then yeah. he won the tournament. Yeah, yeah. And uh, David Williams became second. We played the last two tables. And I had this terrible hand with... Uh, um, What's his name? Uh, it, it's 
Dan Harrington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dan Harrington uh, played his uh, ace jack offshoot. And I had pocket force to black force. And it was uh, who gets on the bubble. Mm. And it was 10 players, and we played for the bubble. And mm. then he opened up. I call him with two fours on the button because I know he plays solid and I get them off the hand. He will still play solid hands, mm. but he don't like to play out of position. Yeah. So I didn't want to re-raise him with pocket fours because I don't expect anybody to call behind me unless they have a better hand. Yeah. And it fault fault and the flop came down uh, two, two, seven, no, eight queen six of clubs, three clubs. And he checked it straight away. As soon as he saw queen eight, six of clubs, he checked it. Yeah. And I knew he would open up with an ace, any reasonable ace, he would open up. And if he would have hit his queen, he would bet out to let mm. me put away my hand if I have no connection. Mm. Um, and if he would have the ace of clubs, he would easily could play it on because he have protection from the ace plus. Yeah, he's holding the ace, so he can he can just win the pot there by betting it out. Yeah, and he didn't bet it out, so I know he didn't hit his ace. If he had the ace, he should bet it. He's one of the best players in the world for tournaments. Yeah, so I just moved Oli for 900,000 and he had like 1,050,000 in front of him. So it's like, he's going to bubble or I'm going to bubble, but yeah. I mean, have she, he's seen the flop. So he have to give me credit for something, even when I have offsuit ace with the queen, mm. if I have, what should I have, you know? So, it was a long day and he sits there and he now now comes the point where it's important to have a line on the table. Uh, he looks at it and he say, yeah, nice bet, nice bet. And then he put his cards, his hand on his cards and he moves slowly his hands to the middle with the cards of the table. Mm. And he have le one last look at his cards. But he's falling already very clearly, you understand? And then you see, he has the ace of clubs. And then right. he pulls his hand back. And then he fought another three and a half minutes about it. Yeah. And then he called. And he, then he hit a jack, he hit a jack. And then he told people that they asked him why he played like this. And then he say, well, you know, uh, I fought by myself. If you have a small pair, then I can win with ace, jack, or flush. So I must be in favor. Mm. And I say, well, a six or an eight could be a small pair. Then they have a set. Then there is no favor at all. And mm. as it is, I'm in favor as it is because I'm the aggressor. And the yes. minimum you have to give me is a pair. So you're behind. Yeah. And if I don't have a pair, I have a queen, then you're miles behind. But the, the point is, he had a misread on his hand. So I say, yeah. I, I just want him, I wish him all the best, but I want him to be honest and tell the people I had a misread on my hand. I didn't know I had the ace of clubs. Mm. I say, because they didn't film it all and put it online. But yeah. And then somewhere a year or two later, he said, yeah, he had a misread, he had a misread on his hand. He, he thought he the ace of spades or whatever checks the flop. Uh, he didn't know which, yeah. he knew, yeah. he knew, he was looking for an ace to hit yeah. or the board, ace or jack, when I call in, out of position for him. He's out of position. And because he missed the flop, mm. he didn't think about having the ace of clubs. Yeah. So when he checked and I moved in and he wanted to give up, you know, he said, um, he thought like there's nothing to call for him yeah. unless he have the ace of clubs but then he should have taken the lead to bet out 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's yeah. not folding against me anyway, why should he give me a chance to hit something on the turn if I check behind him? Mm. It doesn't make sense for the hand how he played it. Yeah. So, yeah. and then he he admitted a couple of years later that he uh, he had a misread on his hand. He was very tired, and he is older than me. So at that time, he was like, he, you know, when people say, oh, what, what the heck, you know, and then I go home. Or, mm. know, and uh, we need to play out one player and get on the bubble. So mm. that was, uh, for me, a disaster. That, yeah. That, yeah. That moment. I still had, um, I still had given some instructions to Dave Williams between the breaks because he's a good friend of Noah Booker, mm. which I had uh, working with in the place I had the hobby room and he had the poker news in Netherlands. So uh, it was still a good year, a great year for me. But I mean, the, I wanted to win the World Series, of course. Do you? you know, yeah. And then how how do you look back at those couple of years? Is this are you? Is, this, is there still is there disappointment? Well, or? there's some mistakes. Some mistakes I have made by uh, letting the focus go, having made some mistake by reacting too impulsive with that one hand with uh, Greg Raymond, which he uh, very well used the chips to win it straight out. Uh, I mean, I mean, he's a great player, but uh, there are always some small things that you look back at where you go like, I have to learn from these mistakes, you know? Yeah. I don't say I did everything perfect, but there are some particular mistakes that are important. Mm. I, the last time when I get uh, 23, uh, last three tables in 2017, yeah. Um, I saw that uh, we had a certain situation where I was getting low with my chips. You know, hanging in, I need to find a hand to really make a difference. And then still I have like two million then. And I was trying to get there, but I find an ace on the button, ace eight. And there was, I mean, 15,000, 30,000 or something. And, and there was one player always opening up. Hmm. And he was the chip leader, so he was very aggressive. And he opened up any two cards every time. And then with the showdowns, I saw some hands and he was laughing. So, so I was playing tight. And on the button, I find ace eight, and then he opened up, and the next guy next to him called in position. And he had like a 1.6 million or something. Anyway, yeah. I thought it came to, no, I had like 2.3 million, the blinds were uh, 30, 60 or something. Anyway, it came to a fact where. Yeah. I had to give in uh, making a stand to the fact that they know my money is in. So I put like 70% of my money in, mm. giving them the idea that I have a very strong hand, obvious. <laughs> because I know that the chip leader will not throw away his money because he opens up with every hand. And if he yeah. finds a hand, I mean, if you really have kings, I still have 30%. Yeah, yeah. And and with ace 10, ace jack, I don't see him calling me there anyway. Yeah. And if the guy next to him didn't have a strong enough hand to put him off the hand in position to re-raise him, what hand can he have that he's going to call me if I'm showing him the power of going all in for two, two and a half million and he had like yeah. three and a half, which was good enough, he's still okay. But then the the least expected the, the chip leader throws away and the other guy start to think about it and then calls me and he have two jacks so mm. i never hit my ace i mm. didn't i didn't feel bad about the hand yeah i feel more unfortunate i think yeah. i played it very well 
to accumulate chips and still have a 30% chance, which I have. And these are the moments you need to get lucky to hit your ace and get in the group. Yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, how, how, how does it feel those last couple of days in, in 2017 when you're kind of getting, so in 2003, there was, a, there was 839 players and you finished 14th. Uh, in 04, there was 2,500 players and you finished 10th. Uh, and then in 2017, there was 7,200 players and you got down to the, the final 23. So it was actually yeah. your deepest run kind of as a percentage. What are you feeling after, you know, 13 years previous, you've had a run. Now you're back, back in amongst the, you know, very close to the final table. Are you thinking there's a long way to go or are you thinking this, this could finally be it? Uh, no, I was, not, I, I was just... Um, uh, Somehow I felt like uh, they did hardly gave me attention mm. before that in the in the in the, the lineup of the days before that. Yeah, be, because uh, sometimes people think you didn't make it or you didn't get there or like say I put it in with aces and the guy is lucky and he beats me mm. and then. They go like, yeah, but, you know, he's not playing that good anymore like he used to. Mm. Nothing to do with it. It's just like, you understand? So when I look at, I know what to do when I play a World Series. I think uh, I have lasted longer in, in, in World Series, you know, like grinding it out. But when you don't get the opportunity in the hands you were given, mm. then even the best player in the world cannot win the event because you have to go through the level changes and you have to go through the rounds. And sometimes you just stone gold with your hands. Mm. But I figured out that somehow, by any reason, uh, they hardly uh, came to me with updates or they did something. Or, uh, I think there's a lot of influence of if it's let's say it's i just give a sample if something is pushed by 888 like the world series was they will not going to show party poker player yeah, yeah because they are putting everything on television so even when norma chat is a good friend of mine and i talk with him and we have crashes they will not want him to go to my table to say hello and put me on because I'm with Pat Parker. Yeah. So I hardly get coverage, <laughs> which normally they should say, look at the, look who, who's back in the yeah, exactly, yeah. tables or whatever, you know, like, and then I find out people even get scared. You get deeper and deeper and deeper because now they have to show you because they have the last four, three tables. Yeah. Who's in those three tables? And then suddenly, look, the Flying Dutchman is in the last three tables. Yeah. He's back. Well, I've never been gone. <laughs> but if you play with thousands of people in a live game where you only play so many hands a day and you need to find aces or you need to find winning hands sometimes and you need to get the hands you can play with, if you don't get them, then you might be losing your chips without even feeling yeah. you have been in the game. So. It's not like you can play the World Series game five times today and five times tomorrow in you know, order to get chips to get deep. Yeah. You have to do it there and then. So it is for me, and I've been one time, I think I've been 101 out of a few thousand players in the World Series. And one time I have been like 163 or something. And that was deep. Yeah. But really to get to the last three tables, 20, the last 24 yeah. players being one of them, they had to put me on television. They had to give me some uh, uh, coverage. Well, they have to give me some some profiling yeah. back and come up with a story. And I get a lot of reactions of people going like, we didn't know you were in the game. We, we, how can they not mention the fact Mm. You came so deep. People know you on the internet. It's, yeah, it's, I was not even with anybody at that time. 
Mm. I was not with Poker Stars or Party Poker. Mm. I think a little bit later I was with Intertops at that time. Uh, but that was quite strange. But still, yes, of course, you always hope to get deep. Yeah. And uh, so I made that move and pray if they call me to hit my ace or win that hand somehow. Uh, but I have to start to move because I felt like I'm drying up. And it was very likely for me that every round I get weaker with the big uh, anties yeah. uh, paying. That I, I would have last like five more rounds or something. Although I had like, it looked like a small stack. And I thought, now is the time, it's now or never. I have a position, there's that money. Uh, if I get one calling me out, I need an ace. Or I need my eight, or I need an ace. It, yeah. It's just like, uh, but yeah, coming that deep was, uh, yeah, a great feeling, of course. And it's, I think it was more like making a stand to the world, showing them that, after all these years, I mean, you can easily, not easily, but you can still win it, be in it and get that deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, just takes another day. <laughs> it's a nine days game or something. It used to be a seven days game. Exactly. It, yeah. it's, not like I, it's not like I miss out on the condition. Although when you get older, you need more energy to mm -hmm. save. You know, it's not like, you can go on for three days in a row. Mm. But uh, from the fact, how you approach it, how I deal with it, and yeah, it's, uh, I still feel like if I'm pity enough this year, there's no World Series. Mm. But otherwise, I would be, a, I would be there and, and play and give myself a good chance, better yeah. than the average. Yeah, better than the normal expected average because I can only play at one table at one time, and I figure out I love to play with good players mm. because then they give me respect for being a good player. And mm. if somebody gamble, I don't like when somebody gambles. But then you need to have the moment where you say, "Okay, you you try to gamble, gamble, gamble. Let's gamble, but I'm in front." And yeah. leave it, you know. But I like to gamble when I'm in front. Mm. Instead of calling and hope to be in front, mm. you know, it's 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 just a call with ace ten. I don't like. It. Mm. You understand? Because yeah, yeah, you want to keep, keep. It's just like not. But I don't mind to attack with ace ten and put it all in. Mm. And. Wait How are you going to call with Ace? Yeah. If, yeah. And if you call like that, it's good luck to you. It's still yeah. good or something. But it's just like the situation, but at some point you are changing the game and the gear and depending on the situation, depending on the players on the table. I love to have a chip leader on the table mm. because he's my bank. <laughs> if I ever want to get Back in the game, the chip leader is going to pay me off. Mm. Logically, because they always look at your stack like, mm, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, couple, uh, couple of, a uh, couple of last questions, all for you, Marcel. Um, just a couple of kind of quick, uh, quick, fun ones for you. Um, what was your longest period without sleep? Uh, I'm always scared that people don't believe me because it's not one time it happened, but uh, about four days in a row. Wow, wow. I, uh, we had games. I had a game that we played, like we had a club in, in Amsterdam that called Filmo. It was a disco. Uh, uh, they sold uh, video uh, films. Yeah. Filmo, that was the name. It was selling films. You had to be a member. And then upstairs, they had a gaming area. We played poker there. But they had another upstairs. It was a restaurant. Fantastic food. Mm. 
So whenever I had an opportunity to visit them and play with some people, uh, poker, they had a great poker game as well. Then we could always have good food, which was the attraction, mm -hmm. of course. And whenever I was finished and I'm hungry, then when it was at the nighttime, when we went through one day to the other day, and then at night we stopped sometimes, I just went over there just to eat, like it's a night restaurant. Yeah. And they had the game going, I'd say hello and have a drink and just... And then one day after I played for three, three, three and a half days in my place, I was hungry and I went over there. And while I was waiting for my food, I fell asleep at the table in the restaurant. I'm waiting for my food, which takes normally five minutes or something, I fell asleep. And, and while I was, somebody touched me and woke me up like, hey, say hello. And, and I go like, and then I had this strange feeling in my body, like I was numb, you know, mm. like, it's just like I didn't sleep for three days. So it was like, I was feeling like I'm gonna hallucinate. I didn't feel good. Suddenly my hunger, I couldn't feel hungry anymore. Yeah. So I thought, I don't need food, I need sleep. <laughs> so I took my water, I drank my water, I say, thanks. And I left my money and say, uh, tell them I will be back, but uh, tomorrow or something. And mm. I, I, I wanted to walk, I walk out and I go home as quick as possible. And I slept for about uh, 16 hours or something. And when I went to bed and I start to try to lay down, uh, then I only felt my head, only my head, nothing else of my body I could feel. And it was a very strange thing, but I think that's because you can do only so much because normally we did like two days in a row was just like yeah. around the clock, you know, coming in and they, these games, you never knew when they stop. Somebody comes in you, then the tank is fuel. It's going on and on and people call, is there a game? And yeah. sometimes I call them and I say, there is a nice game. And they expected me to give them a game always. But they, then I find out that when I come home after two days and I sleep, then I could, after I slept, go and I do another two days, no sweat. Mm. But when I had those sessions for three days, and don't forget, I, I didn't use anything yeah. other than water in my face when I get sleepy. Mm. And when we played, used to play five card stuff in the early days, I used to close my eyes when the river card came, the last card, and you get and squeeze him and then they open. And then you, sometimes you, you're in a hand or sometimes you're not in the hand, but other people are in the hand. And somebody makes the river bed and the other one thinks if it's a bluff or not. Mm. And I close my eyes and then I was sleeping for a minute. You, you say, how do you do that? And then they were saying, sometimes when I'm in a hand, I close my eyes. I was waiting for somebody. I didn't hear them make a move or they make a bet or they check. Yeah. And they say, hey, are you sleeping? And I go like, no, no, I'm thinking. You know, <laughs> but I was sleeping. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I take those power nips, you know, between mm. for my feeling like 30 seconds, yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's like, but if you watch these K1 fights, then it makes a big difference if if you get, uh, a 20 or 30 seconds period mm. where you can recover. Today I, I was running with my daughter and then we're outside where we do like interval, you do 50 meters, 100 meters, you run and then you walk, you run, you walk mm. because I, I have no such great condition of course. Mm. So then you you know just how big advantage you get where you get a few steps between where you can get back your yeah. air. You know, you get, you get to breathe again and you can come back and then start to do it again and again. And then mm -hmm. after a couple of times doing that interval training, uh, then you start to feel better. Mm -hmm. Because you get used to it and then you start to feel like, oh, that's great. You know? 
get yeah. back in the in into your shape mm. yeah yeah um yeah i definitely find yeah the uh stay, staying up all night you can um it's yeah having those having those little breaks just to give yourself a bit of a rest makes uh makes all the difference um what uh what would you pick for your last meal uh, funny you say so because somebody else told me uh, asked me that same question. Okay. We were talking. We were talking with the family, and then uh, I don't know. Was it yesterday? Somebody said, "What would you pick for your last meal?" And I said, "Sushi." <laughs> sushi. Okay. <laughs> sushi. I love sushi. What's, what, but, what's your favorite sushi uh, place in Vegas? Uh, you know, I don't. Of course, it's uh, you got fantastic places where you have to stand in line and wait and be happy you're served and pay a fortune, <laughs> and that puts me off the place. Yeah. And if I go to Naked Fish, they have a few special roles, and although they changed up and they pushed the prices up because they're running fantastic now and it's outside the strip. Mm. Uh, but even I was in All You Can Eat, where you can walk in get served one after the other, because sometimes between uh, a break from one hour in the World Series or when you walk in, you just don't want to spend all night in a sushi place. Yeah. Um, they have fantastic sushi. As long as they make it fresh, and you can pick and you know what to pick. Yeah. So it don't have to be expensive Yeah. to be good. And Nobu is a great place, but I think it's overdone mm. according to the fact that yes, they have fantastic, yeah. uh, they have fantastic, uh, they make it great, but I don't want to wait I don't, and I don't want to eat small things, I, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I have a feeling if I'm hungry, I want to eat and if I like it, I want to have a lot of mm. what I like, you know. Yeah. And then I look at those prices and I, I'm looking at the waiting list to get served mm. and it takes me too long and it takes too long to wait. And it's, I like to say this, that, 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 that. Mm. not like stuffing yourself as social, but feeling very well fed when I come yeah. out of a sushi place. Yeah, thanks a million for, for joining me, Marcel. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy, enjoy lockdown and uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks you... for the opportunity. Take care. Have a great night. You bye, too. Jamie. Bye, Marcel. Thanks bye. a million. Bye-bye. My, my son is uh, deep in music. He just launched a song, Shut Eye. You can find it. Shut Eye from Gravity Circus. of my head are hanging around shut down the computer might be okay but the kid ain't safe and sound fake safety and numbers cause when it really matters no one's around tldr tmi should i shut Find me searching for a meaning of the obscene scenery screening on the clothesline and the lies away. Submarine, just leave it there. And all that I have left are too many fingers in both of my hands to count all of my friends. I'm not even sure if I can count all of them.